Welcome then, friends, to Tanked Up, the podcast about video games and beer. I'm one of your hosts, Ben. It's episode 252. I'm here with the luscious Lucy. Oh, hello. Thank you. It's quite all right. And the... I can't remember what I used last time. I'm going to go with astounding. Hey. Hey. Hey, it's me. I am astounded. (laughs) (laughs) you don't don't present being astounding to people just constantly astounded um good and of course there's you benevolent ben (laughs) oh why thank you let's open some beers let's chat about some games for the week if you've never listened to us before we are a podcast in which we talk about video games talk about video game culture things surrounding that and we drink some beers drink some crap beers um so we'll kick straight into oh no you're not on any tonight are you lucy no you had i mean we both had a bit of a a, you had Mm -hmm. a complete of sort of january was off completely yeah back for a couple of episodes with some beers and just having a nice quiet week again yeah yeah i just oh not going to the gym is a trip so i'm just trying to make not concessions but other improvements in other areas mm-hmm. so that's good mm-hmm. absolutely down a bit. maybe i should uh, uh prioritize when i drink the beer so i'm having one with you two but <laughs> i mean uh... i wouldn't complain about that decision making but um... <laughs> so no, instead of having one again. like on a friday i should uh just be like no to friday beer yes to tuesday beer yeah i'll get the balance right eventually but i think it's again it's kind of like when the moment takes you like if, if it comes to friday like I could really do with a beer you shouldn't then penalize yourself into kind of not having one when you feel like it because you're sort of either you've had one on the tuesday or you're then <laughs> waiting to kind of have one on on the tuesday it's got to be sort of more situational hasn't it very really? true yeah agreed yeah yeah mm. fair fair but cool. I, I i don't know like, it's just some weird habit i have of like i don't know if habit's the right word but it's mm. like i don't tend to drink during the week mm-hmm. <laughs> i think that's just like oh working you know it's sort of like a friday treat or yeah something right like that's that. fair. whereas when i'm unemployed it's like drink all day every day <laughs> it's fine it's meant to be like that <laughs> that's my excuse <laughs> yeah it's because it's it's i'm unemployed <laughs> yeah yeah, that's how we roll. Uh, and I work for myself, so I can just sit here. I've got no one to no one to answer to but myself. So if I feel rubbish, it's my fault. Exactly. Come on. I think what Ben does is he also only drinks when he's unemployed. He just fires himself, and then shortly afterwards <laughs> rehires himself. <laughs> that's it. Currently, I'm unemployed. I might I might find myself a position tomorrow, but yes. Uh, good. Let's open um, some beers then, Adol. Uh, what are you uh, starting off with today? A beer hmm. of some sort. That is behind me. That one. I couldn't remember. Um, <laughs> one it is this one. It's the Corfu Food Advisor. Hmm. It is Malt Garden collab with Seven Island. Uh, it is I ha- a very wordy uh, type of beer. It is a Greek tzatziki pastry sour with pink guava and mango and cucumber. A Ooh. Polish and Greek collaboration. It is the most wild set of things I have seen in a while, and I had to buy it. That's weird. Yeah, that sounds like a menu at a food truck. It does. It sounds like mm. it's, it's fusion food, but in a tin. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's some five... feta cheese on that. Yeah, it's 5.5%. Some harissa and everything that us Westerners consider exotic. Yeah, yeah I'm like surprised you don't have sriracha. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm giving the nice. Corfu Food Advisor. What well, was the percentage? Five point five, okay. and it's a full five hundred mil can. Yes. Good. European size. Otherwise, it's a half beers. liter. Mm-hmm. Mm. Nice. Well, that sounds way worse though. It sounds like I'm drinking half a liter of beer. Five hundred mm. mil sounds better. <laughs> Don't know it's why. just the nuance, isn't it? But between yeah. that, yeah, it's like no, I'll have a five hundred mils, thank you. Um, cool. I am going to drink then a beer from Verdant uh, called Forty Watt Moon. It's a double IPA. It's eight percent. It. I, I don't know why, but 
on the back you can see it says mm, might not quite focus enough for you to see but it says hot side citra and strata cold side citra and strata so who knows what, what that what's it called again no. uh, 40 watt moon uh, okay. they just got one of the what dark side, side, of, the side of the moon riff I don't know I don't know uh, one part of the brewery's cold, the other's got a little oil heater. Maybe that's it. Mm. As, it, as yeah. it transfers across in between different vessels and, and <laughs> things, that's what they've decided. Uh, probable cracking. There's no flavour text, as with most verdant beers. Yeah. Just gives yeah, you the mine, hops. Obviously. Cool. Adol, we'll come back to you. Um, for, I didn't for, mention for what I assume is going to be. Ass... Or... Mm. Um... Uh, now it looks like mango juice. Wow. It's kind of almost thick enough to be mango juice looking to. It's just got the right sort of slightly translucent, but basically opaque and the orange tone of mango. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. as I poured it, it smelled, it got wafts of tropical immediately. Uh, clo closer nose and you get, um, Smells like a light sour mm -hmm. on the nose, sort of like you get a bit of a tang. Still have some of those tropical notes, and actually something kind of like the cooling of a cucumber. But it might just be because I know cucumbers in the name. You know how sometimes yes. your brain mm -hmm. fills in the blanks. But it does have something in the offsetting the tartness. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, there's like no carbonation. This this is essentially juice, um, which is kind of wild to me. <laughs> I mean, we've had we've had juice bombs, yeah. but oh, they don't always have that appearance of juice. At least you know they they get close, but that that just um, just looks like juice. Yeah, it it's got the creamy texture of of juice, and um, this so it is definitely more guava tropical than mango mm -hmm. um which isn't surprising because it says it has guava in it uh, i'm really sorry i'm just kind of thrown off the finish um has that cucumber and a bit of a tartness um and because of the creaminess i'll be fucked if it doesn't taste kind of like tzatziki between mm -hmm. all those things which is yeah. just wild because it doesn't taste bad which you would think a tzatziki tasting mm. beer would but it's it's reminiscent. It's got got all these component flavors, and it's like, yeah, that's that's very tzatziki without being like I dumped tzatziki mm -hmm. in a beer. Um, it's not. Like oh, it does a have a mango in it like, as well. Okay, so I'm not totally you off. Sort of, does it have that kind of like slightly more minty kind of flavor to it as well, or is that kind of maybe the missing bit? That might be it. Yeah, you're mm. right. Because yeah, it's definitely like this creamy texture, this tartness of like soured cream mm -hmm. and some cucumber oh my god <laughs> this does not sound nice I, dude, I'm having a hard time describing it in a way that makes it, it doesn't sound seem yeah. Le yeah. like that makes it doesn't like, doesn't make it seem less appealing than it is um, it's wild because it's this weird under note but you also have this like guava mango tropical fruit forefront thing and it's mostly just as it fades away the tartness fades into this slightly creamy cucumber taste which isn't like I am tasting Ziki. It's like oh, and I'm paying attention. These things make are reminiscent of Ziki. Um, mm -hmm. It's still. I don't know what it. Yeah, sorry. Just I keep wanting to take more sips because, as my palate's getting used to the tartness. Um, that's like it's getting, the mango and the guava are coming more to the forefront earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, and and now you know a few sips in that like component part tzatziki ness is much less so, right? Um, which is good, I think. Um, mm -hmm. It's still it's still like the very end, like the most of it, like just that that it's like an air at the very end of the finish. It's not on your tongue, just in the back of your throat, as if you had had something sort of creamy and cucumbery. That's still kind of there. But most of the finish is sort of faded into the tropicaliness. Yeah. Which I think is really good design just because 
if it actually tasted like all these things strongly, I don't think it would be a good beer. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm actually super curious, super curious, super curious, um, it, how it'll change by the end if like only a few sips in and a few sort of like a minute or two with it on my palate. It's mm -hmm. already sort of the thing that was like blowing my mind is already sort of taking the back seat, which I think again is a good thing because outside of being like, whoa, that really does taste like tzatziki. It's not like a, whoa, I'm so glad this beer tastes a little bit like tzatziki. Now it's like, okay, that's already ref like pulled back and, and it, I'm getting more of the beery flavors. Although it's so still um, mm -hmm. that I, I I want it to be more beery in the texture, even though, like, so even though the tastes are getting, you know, you're getting more of a sour beer regular taste, it's still like, but I'm still drinking kind of juice. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll see how that balance goes in, in, in the um, forthcoming minutes. Yeah. Nice. Good. Okay. Um, so for me, 40 Watt Moon. It's very, very. Um, light in color you can see it's got sort of a, a hint of yellow to it but um mm. it's very very thick it's almost a solid color it's not quite yellow it's not quite orange it's a bit murky somewhere in the middle a mm. uh, big frothy head when i poured which has dissipated quite nicely but still leaving a little bit of lacing just around the glass which is nice has a it looks like a banana milkshake <laughs> it does yeah it does a little bit <laughs> Um, it's got a nice kind of mangoey, but also like a hint of something more like melon in there in the nose. Mm -hmm. But it's not a big nose; it's quite light. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. It's a very light beer. Like there's a, there's a there's a bigger flavour in there. There's some bigger fruits in there, but mm. sort of the mouthfeel how refreshing it is as well make me think at least that it's telling my brain that this is lighter than it is you know it's got a nice big sort of mango flavor to it um, maybe the melon in the nose is, is lost a little bit in the in the flavor but that might start to present itself a little bit more um, but it's very very refreshing it, it feels like feels very cold obviously it's been in the fridge for the afternoon but something about this makes it feel uh, like a bit colder and a bit more refreshing than I would normally find, say, like a double IPA. I don't know what that is. Uh, it's the ice in the banana milkshake. Mm. Maybe it's mm. something, has it got oats in it? It has got oats in it. Barley, wheat. Um, that's all it sort of tells me from the, the extra sort of bits. But... There's something else in this. It might be... Now you said banana, it's making me think, oh, it does have a little bit of, of that kind <laughs> of feel to it. Like, it does feel like, not a milkshake as such, but something that is, you know, a little bit more oaty. You know, we get the creaminess a little mm -hmm. bit from, from the inclusion yeah. of oats and stuff. It has that to it. So it being a little bit colder, being a little bit more refreshing, and the inclusion of those oats are just making it feel a little bit more sort of creamy rather than going the other way and it's sort of being a bit more sort of resinous and oily um it, it's definitely try to lighten itself uh, i think and, and and go more towards that sort of side but yeah nice big mango flavor creamy and as i say there is something else just in there i'm not sure it is banana but it's mm. It's reminiscent of. Um, so whether again, whether it's, it's it's the yeast that's been used, something like that, which might just be adding to that kind of aspect of it as well, just to give a very kind of underlying flavour that runs throughout, and that's almost the thing that kind of sticks with you. There is a not a sort of not a big bitterness to it, but there is a very very light bitterness that just sits at the back of your throat. That kind of creeps in right towards the end, which is maybe a little more um, sort of smoky than anything else. You know, it's mm -hmm. very, very light. 
on the bitterness, but it does have a little hint of something there. Um, wouldn't wouldn't tell you this was eight percent whatsoever from drinking it, uh, apart from it being a bit more full bodied. That's that's yeah. it really, giving away that it is a bigger uh, percentage beer, uh, but very nice, very easy drinking. I'm a pour the rest in my glass. Excellent. That's where go. it belongs. Wow. Exactly. First. Yes, just before I deposit it in its ultimate resting place. Um, so, uh, Lucy, mm. we're going to kick off the episode with you this evening. As you haven't got any beers to talk about, Adel and I have spoken at everybody for the last sort of uh, 15 minutes. I thought we'd, we'd kick to you first this week. Um, you can let us know what you've been playing or any other topics you want to uh, discuss this week um i have been playing some ring fit starting that again because it had been a while and um after setting up this gaming chair which makes me a new a a, a real gamer i was a fake gamer before you know so i'm now a real gamer does it say i was just like does it say cyberpunk all over it, or there's <laughs> yeah, so yellow bright yellow. Places? Um... Oh no, it, that looks like one of them Batman chairs because it's black. <laughs> yes, it has uh, Bruce Wayne um, stitched into the uh, oh. headrest. Um... <laughs> Just his face sticking up from <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh... Sadly, this was not uh, sponsored. Um, mm. I mean, that's the only reason I come on tacked up, because I was hoping I'd get a sponsored gaming chair, but mm. <laughs> to no avail. Um, but yeah, it's a Secret Labs uh, mm. Titan. Very, I do recommend. It. It's nice. very good. It's worth the money. Mm. Um, so yeah. Uh, but yes, after setting this up, I was aching. My body was aching, and I was like, it's probably because I haven't moved <laughs> for a few months, so... Let's get back on the uh, ring fit. Mm-hmm. So, I've been playing that. Um, How are you finding it? Is it? Um, did you kind of start where you left off, or have you taken it back sort of a few steps and started, uh, you know, eased yourself into it a little bit? Yeah, because I was doing the um, adventure mode for a while, um, but then I was just like, I don't want to hear this. It's very fun. I think it's a very good, you know, way to, you know, very cliche, make exercise fun. It has got mm-hmm. the, you know, you know, pretty charmful, colourful adventure mode. But I was just like, I don't want to go through this text, hear about, you know, this this really buff dragon, you know, uh, <laughs> killing people or whatever, with his, uh, you know, crushing people between his rock hard thighs or is whatever. That, is that but, actually <laughs> what happens? <laughs> Oh, I mean, dear. it's implied uh, <laughs> yeah. that is a very buff dragon. But anyway, um, amazing. I enjoy it, and I probably do want to eventually want to get back to it at some point. Mm-hmm. But um, what I find really uh, useful about it is that you don't have to do the adventure mode. You can just go into these quick, um, these quick custom uh, like exercises where it's like, okay, we're going to work your your glutes or your core in this um, set of exercises and you just start that and um, yeah it's like, like, what, like five minutes and you can just do several of those nice um, you can also just pick your own um, set of you know uh, exercises it's like okay I want to do planks and follow that up with um, squats and this and that so you can set your own so I, I just usually just go into those custom ones and it's just like in and out you know do it before before I start work in the morning. So yeah, I, I think uh, it's, it's really good. Like I was looking at my profile and it's like, have like 65 hours on on it, which is like, wow, more than I thought. It's probably not that impressive <laughs> considering like, it's been, you know, I've had, had it over a year or something. Mm. Um, when did I get it? Late 2019. So maybe a year and a half or something. What did I get? It? I can't remember. Anyway. <laughs> Given that there's been a pandemic and it's like literally no other outlet other than just running outside in your back garden, like, mm. like you've lost the will. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it, 65 hours may not be a lot, but when I think about it, it's just like, oh yeah, it's more than I thought. But um, 
yeah, it's 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 really useful. I think like for the people who who wanted one, uh, there's like I think they're back in stock and it's just sold well because it's a really good product. It's it's well worth the money. Mm. Yeah, I think it's fi- finally not out of stock. Yeah, in the UK, because for like yeah. most of lockdowns one and two, yeah. um, it, it was like, I was like I would idly look into it because you you've said good things and it's like well, I don't leave this room often outside of <laughs> bathroom and kitchen maybe i should at least move around in this room a little more mm. but you go uh, for walks i do and it, so i didn't mm. earlier in like in lockdowns one and two it was very like oh it's dangerous maybe like minimize risk don't mm-hmm. go out blah 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 and now it's like oh i can minimize risk by avoiding people in the street and still be in the street yeah and uh, progress to put on your flamethrower, and when you see someone burn them before, they can give you COVID. <laughs> <laughs> That's the future we're always wanting to live in. It's, um, it's going now. It doesn't matter. The, the, you know, over here in the UK, it's all going to open up soon. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I, I, Irrevocable I plan. <laughs> yes, we can't I'm get so confident in the plan, unlike all the other plans that we will say that we will do these steps without the possibility of them going backwards, even though that just means that if it goes wrong, we are either going to break our promise to do the right thing or do the wrong thing because we were wrong. Like, I don't mm-hmm. understand. I hate that this rhetoric is working. Like, we're so confident that we're going to say... We'll open schools up and they'll never have to sh- close again. And you're like, okay, but what if they do? No, we, we're we like, yeah. and people just buy it. Like, well, I mean, he's saying he won't close them again. So they must yeah. be sure of it. It's like, that's not how the world. Mm. Anyway, um, sorry, this is, about, this is a podcast about video games. So obviously politics has to stay out of it. Oh, that's true. Yeah, we can't talk about <laughs> politics. Can we? They've got no place. No politics, yeah. No place in yeah. beer or uh, games. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think just doing ring fit because like, I, I probably are not going to go back to the gym as soon as they're open because mm. that'll be everybody else's uh, idea and mm. let me just say I was you know I, I'm alright to hawk a secret labs chair on this show and I'm equally capable because neither of them sponsor us pure gym is terrible gym um, oh. and I don't trust the people who work there or people who go there especially mm-hmm. <laughs> so um yeah just, just just bad um so so yeah I, like when they were opening up last before mm-hmm. what, the second lockdown yeah i was just reading reviews and it was just like you know some are great and then some are just one star it was all over the place and i was just like um yeah i i i i, I know the kind of people who you know I don't want to be mean, but like some of those, uh, I just don't think they care. <laughs> some no, of the staff there, it's just no, like they're there. Absolutely. And it's just like, I, I don't trust them to mm-hmm. wipe down the, every piece of equipment every time someone uses it. So. That's fair. And with ring anyway, you haven't got to worry mm, about that. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It's only my own sweat on that Pilates uh, band, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, but that's Ring Fit and still nice. fully recommend it. Um, just what, to... like 70 quid? That's the cost of. A Call of Duty, yeah. So, um, uh, what's, what, and it comes that, with the thing, yeah. And yeah, yeah. That, that's including the um, the thingy. What do you normally pay? A cheap gym's about a tenner a month. Yeah, mine's about fifteen or yeah. something like yeah. that. So that's mm. six months of the gym. Yeah, yeah. So um, so yeah. Just to round that kind of conversation out, did you find um that going back to it? you are uh, kind of happy with what you've done and will pick this up again on a you know daily other every yeah, other day kind of weekly kind of basis or is it sort of a little bit more novelty um i i just i don't find it as a novelty now because mm-hmm. it's like you know i know what it is and it's it's purely functional at this point. Um, I think. I think the if I want novelty, I'll probably go back to that adventure mode. Um, yes. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's just it's just useful to have because mm. it does. It it's one of those games where it's like there's tons of um, you know fitness games and stuff like that. I was looking at. I was just putting like um, a few discs back into um, my bookshelf, and I was like, 
Connect training? I had Connect training on the 360, and I was like, uh-huh. uh, that must have been terrible. I can't remember it. <laughs> that must have been terrible because it's like it, the original Connect was um, not great. Um, so that mu- there's a reason I don't remember playing it. Probably because I played it and it probably didn't work much. But yeah, um, the, the the Switch, had, you know, and the Joy-Con and the the Pilates man, it's just so good at what it does. Where it's not like you can cheat it or you want to cheat it, and and it <clears throat> and it does just it always motivates you, like because you're feeling that that feedback in the in the vibration of the Joy-Con and the Pilates room, which is just a normal Pilates room. But yeah, it, it just it, it's just integrated so well, where it's, it just works, and it's like it, it's it's an, it's one of those that you can fall off, but not because of any design flaw in the game, just mm. more your own lifestyle, you know? So it's, yeah, I, th- I think it's, you know, by far, uh, probably is probably the best example of like an exercise game mm-hmm. there is. Nice, good. Yeah, good stuff. Um, I-, I switched back on the Wii U, actually. Oh, oh wow. I know. <laughs> I, I, I finished. Uh, that did you have to Mario lift? Was that game. one of the exercises, lifting the uh, the tablet up constantly? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's like ten kilograms that tablet. <laughs> um, in fact, actually, no, it's not. It's worse than that. It's like three grams because it weighs the same. The Fisher Price tablet, and it's just. I, I've been playing with it though. Um, mm-hmm. I, I was like, should I charge my Pro controller? And I was just like, no, nah, I'll just play. The, the gamepad and it's all right i'm playing that mario game because that, that 3d world one came out yeah. recently and i think it's quite funny that's 60 pounds and i went on the uh wii u shop and it's mm. 20 pounds wow <laughs> it's like, yeah i mean God. so I, I will wrong. say that the bowser's fury has gotten so many positive reviews though mm-hmm. it's three yeah. hours because it just shows so much improvement and like um like cyclical improvement and fixing all the things you didn't realize could be made better out of 3D Mario games. And so I think I get why people yeah. are rushing to buy that version. Although if it's only three, like to me, it just is like, cool. When the next Mario full length game comes out, I'll probably day one buy it because of mm-hmm. all the reviews of this four hour game attached to an old game versus yeah, playing that, 60 quid yeah. for both. Mm-hmm. Realistically, I'd, I'd probably end up purchasing it on the switch i didn't own it on uh the wii u despite having a wii u but um yeah i wouldn't mind picking that up when it's like 30 percent off but it's i'm still part of the problem um when i have a perfectly capable wii u but as you say if it bowser's fury at least gives it a little something. bit more incentive yeah rather than just pooping out um something and just you know like oh, Donkey Kong, no, that had Funky Kong mode, and just Funky Kong mode is good enough. Um, so it's not just the remaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's <laughs> they're adding additional things in to then bring it to another platform. Yeah, which is good. They have no incentive to because people still buy them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. But yeah, I played that Mario game. It's not as bad as I thought it was. It is bad, but it's not as which- bad. It's bad in Mario terms, but um, because it's so ugly. And, Which one uh, is it? Sorry? Some of those like <laughs> <laughs> levels are uninspired. It's it's the one on the U, uh, Wii U. I think it's just called Mario Brothers Deluxe U mm. or something like that. Oh, There's one I, I got do free with the console. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's because I played it after 3D Land on the 3DS, and I was like, that's actually decent because I'm not a massive fan of the 3D Marios, but that was decent. And mm. then I went right into that Wii U game, and it was just like, ugh, this is proper ugly. It's it's so un. It's, some of those levels are just very uninspired. And it's just god awfully ugly. <laughs> I think that's mm. my issue. That the, it's so ugly. Was that the game <laughs> the that they also it's like a added? Mobile game. Uh-huh. Is it is it that style that they also added assets to Mario Maker Two from? Yeah, I think mm. so. yeah. I think I think that was one of the um, uh, art styles in it, and just like 
let's just smear poop over the switch as well and just call that an art <laughs> style. So uh, just just horrendously ugly. But <laughs> yeah, it's not as bad as I thought it was. But um, so yeah, I'm gonna finish that and. Uh, yeah, just a lot of bits and bobs, really. Mm -hmm. um, I think the game I really, uh, you know, want to talk about more is uh, that Minute Fun Racer. Oh, yes. I was cool. going to mention this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can talk about that when you're ready, Ben. No, let's let's do it now. I'm, I'm happy to, yeah? to chat about it. Yeah. Ooh. I'm going to race into it. I didn't end up playing it, though I meant to. Now I feel bad. <laughs> it's fine. Talk about it when you play it. No, it's evergreen. These games are evergreen. I'm Correct. All games are evergreen. Game, so yeah, take your time. They're going to be around forever. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So, well, but, I mean, tell tell me about it. Mm. It's it's. I just like saying this. It's part of the uh, minute yeah. cinematic universe. <laughs> nice. <laughs> minute, a game that which. Adil, did you ever? get around to playing it I, oh i played it I know not a bunch to. but i played it yeah i never like beat it oh, okay i played yeah. several minutes of it <laughs> yeah um, it's uh yeah, it was one of those things where like, 2018 I, yeah, yeah i liked it i just never got never sort of the the week mm -hmm. that i played it a little bit it was you know other things came up and i never returned to it mm -hmm. but it wasn't because yeah. the game there wasn't something wrong with the game it's just you know life mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's it's Minute Fun Race has the same uh, concept where every sixty seconds you uh, respawn, you die. Um, Minute was a top-down Zelda-like game, um, you know, adventure. Whereas mm -hmm. uh, Minute Fun Racer is a racer. It, it, you know, um, it's very well. It's linear. You're just driving from. Um, left to right, mm -hmm. and you're meant to reach the goal uh, within the space of 60 seconds, and right. same in the same really nice one-bit art style, which I had to sit a, a little bit back away from yes. you know, the screen. Yes. <laughs> it was getting a bit blurry, and mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, these one-bit graphics are just like, uh, you know, moving mm. at pace. I mean, um, it, in minute the the first game, it was like okay, that was very you know slow and not sedentary, but you know moves at a much slower pace. Whereas this is like you know zooming past. Yeah, and you were on with with minute, you were on like fixed tiles, so you yeah. were kind of presented most of the most of the screen at once, and it might have scrolled very slightly, but you know that mm -hmm. was the playable area, and you kind of moved in and around that sort of thing. Whereas this is just constant scrolling as you're moving yeah. your racer kind of in and out of different obstacles or racing it forward or braking and, and, and those sorts of things so it does move at a much faster pace and, and exactly the same Lucy I had to I was sat here playing and I'm like oh, I just need to kind of sit here like this and, and <laughs> play instead because yeah. it was it was just so I, I could see myself being like yeah. Oh, I, I can't <laughs> quite keep up with what was sort of was coming and then just mm -hmm. knocking into cars and dying um, <laughs> because I was trying yeah. to look too far ahead it's basically driving in the city just a whole bunch of debris and crap and other cars in the way people sleeping um, in the road mm. at their vehicle yeah it so if you're looking to pass your driving test uh, play this um <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna have to do that. You realize? So one of the options to the pandemic is uh, I was gonna. I last time I was in Canada, uh, I got screwed around by my bank for proof of address, etc., for renewing my driver's license, and then mm -hmm. I was. But I knew I had six months after the expiry of the license, which was on my birthday, so November, 2019. Sorry, October 2019. I know when my birthday is. Shut up. I was about to say. Oh. Um, but I was like, I'm going back at Easter, so I'll just catch the tail end of the six month grace period to renew. But then the pandemic came. Mm -hmm. So now I don't have a legal driver's license. <laughs> and it's been so long oh, and it's been man. expired. Uh, yeah. uh, so the reason I didn't transfer it to here is because in Canada, you normally test with an automatic. Right. Mm -hmm. And 
the government here knows that. So if you transfer a Canadian license, they will give you an automatic only license mm. for the UK, which is virtually useless. Yep. Um, and then the, and the solution for, for upgrading that license to a regular license is to take a driver's test with an automatic or a manual vehicle. So it's like, okay, well, I don't want to take a test. I, but if I keep until I'm sh like, as I was a student, I could pretend that I was still a resident, but going back home and like fudging the data with the license. And now obviously I can't do that anymore because I'm not a student, but then my license I couldn't renew. And so now it's just like, cool, my parents live outside of the city. So next time I'm in Canada, I can't actually go anywhere because <laughs> I'll be, I won't like, there'll be a car for me, but I won't be allowed using it legally. Fuck, I need to do a driver's test at some point. And I should probably do it here so that I don't have to deal with a kerfuffle. And it's just like, oh God, this is stupid. But also, <laughs> how do you get your driver's license in the middle of a lockdown? <laughs> I have no idea. I have I, seen people. I, I've seen. I've seen learners out. Should, yeah, both of them yeah, are masked. Yeah. The driver, the, the the driver and the instructor, are both wearing masks. Uh, I assume that's it. Really. I guess the only way <laughs> you can. be like the worst time to actually learn though, because nobody else is on the road. <laughs> oh, know? I didn't even think about that. I, I mean, I the best time, time, like scream through it. Yeah, the best time, but also the worst time, because as yeah. soon as all of the cars are on the road, you go, holy. Fuck, where did all of these people come from? Uh, but see, <laughs> I've been driving since I was different 14. For you. Yes, very different. I just need to get experience. to pass a test. Yes. And my mm -hmm. only worry is the things I, I've driven in this country a handful of times, right? Mm -hmm. um, so do you know how to drive manual then? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you uh, drove my car. It's yeah, just it's, 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 I, drove, I drove us back from Birmingham because we broke Ben that night. Oh, true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when I say we, I mean Birmingham and Lucy broke Ben and myself. I just walked it off for eight hours into the into the setting and then raising sun or whatever. Mm. Uh, I, feel, boy, 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 boy. I, I feel at the moment we should, for just for legal reasons, we should probably say Minute Fun Racer is not the way to pass your driving test. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, so so when you said driving around town, you just reminded me that that's a thing I need to get a hold of. But... Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that sucks, um, yeah. Like, mm. How long? Oh, yeah, did I you... mean, not driving. Lucy, I... how long did you spend with uh, with Minute Fun? Oh, uh, I, I think I finished after playing forty nine minutes because I because okay. I, I remember closing oh, wow. the app after I uh, uh, reached the goal for the first time. Um, and after you finish the first goal, you can do two more laps. Um, yes, which. I did not do because I was like, this is going to kill my nerves um, trying to do it for, for another two laps. So I was uh -huh. just like, no, I've, I've um, done done one lap, had a really good time with it, and it was 49 minutes. I remember it was 49 minutes because I closed the app and I was like, I wonder if I beat Ben. He's played for 34 minutes. I wonder if <laughs> he, he finished it in 34 minutes. And I'll, I, I'm the pro gamer now with my gaming chair. Like, you cannot <laughs> beat me. But, um,. <laughs> How, how long did it take you? 35 minutes. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so I did um I did start I did start the second lap but I only had one yes. run at it and that yes, was that yeah. was it. I was like okay yeah, I'll I'll come back to this. Um mm -hmm. and it's and it, it is it is a, it is a fun little mm -hmm. yeah it's a fun little game as you say there are upgrades Ooh. so as you're driving around your your timer starts at 10 seconds and every time you pick up a coin it adds seconds but it also counts as currency to buy things in the shop so you can buy things that have absolutely no purpose to the gameplay things like horns mm. or a flame decal for your for your bike but then you can buy a helmet which will give you one free yeah. bash into anything um, or you can buy like boosts and, and, and things like this so there are some some stuff and it's got that same idea of um you know that minute kind of had that even though you've only got a minute there is progression there is that constant yeah. progression you feel that progression and know that it is kind of uh that it, that it exists you definitely yeah, get it's that such a this. satisfying gameplay loop yeah. that they just have nailed and it's mm. really cool to see just you know different uh application of that core mechanic and still make it really fun and yeah, 
they, 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 I don't know how long the development took on this, but it's like it was just there one day. It was like we release this, and all then all uh, proceeds go to charity. Which yeah, is awesome. And, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what what charity it is, but yeah, everything everything that you um you spend on it all will go to charity. And there's at the moment there are um three levels, so you can get it for two pound and nine p, which is a bit bit random. Mm. Seven seven pound nineteen. And then fifteen forty nine, so it allows you to cater mm -hmm. what you'd like to contribute to as well, which I thought yeah. was a was a, a good um, idea as well. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's just a good little fun racer. Yeah, they've they've it's named nice it little, perfectly. It's a nice little amuse bouche, you know, just like less it than is. an hour. Absolutely, it is. Really? Yeah. I I enjoy their games and it reminds me of, I got to play and finish Disc Room. I don't know what's wrong with me. Mm. Don't know why I haven't yet. Um, maybe my new gamer chair. Uh, yeah. I'll feel more. I'll feel more inclined to uh, play. Watch your satin PC, comfort. But, um, yes. Uh, just one other game. I won't talk about it at length because mm -hmm. I, I'm probably what third of the way through it but um it's this game called uh voyage and i think the dev is called venturos i think they're um european dev let me have a look but anyway uh, i just saw like a news story on my being rock paper shotgun or something like that um, very random, and I was just like, this looks very pretty, and it came out of nowhere. Mm. Um, and it's basically like this, it, it's it's this 2D platformer, it's very simple, there's barely any mechanics, you, you, it, it, it's also co-op and it has remote play. Um, there's this, uh, this man and this woman, and they're just basically going through this really beautiful, ethereal forestry area um it's, it's sort of like you know like going through like fern gully and yeah, okay it, it's 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 as i say there's not many mechanics to it it's just like i press a button and you know um basically drag this this platform it's like moving box puzzles you know just very simple or just like okay there's a, there's a high ledge here i'm just gonna hold down this button and the AI, or if you're playing with a another person, your partner can just be, you know, hoisted up and they, you know, uh, drag you, drag you up. So mm. it's very, very rudimentary in its um, mechanics, very simple in that way. But just the art style and and the animation, it's just, it, it's fantastic. It's like I'm enjoying that about the game. Mm. Um, the gameplay is just like, yeah, but it, ju just that beautiful art style and you know, really nice music that you maybe hear on like a French pier um very <laughs> it's got this very <laughs> quite uh, specific like uh, yeah I don't know how to describe it. it's very European okay pier kind of uh on on the seafront kind of music mm -hmm. it's like it's like a flute and pianos or something but, um what are you, <laughs> so uh, what are you playing this on uh PC <laughs> it was it was 10 percent off I, I think I've looked for it. I think it was like fifteen pounds. I think it was like ten percent off or something. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah, I'll give it a punt. Um, just just really enjoying it. It's as I say, it's very simple, but it, it's just like I'm I'm spamming F12 just to take really nice screenshots because it because it's gorgeous. So Ooh. yeah, and that's called Voyage. Yeah, it does look gorgeous. Voyage. Yeah, it's yeah, very lovely. It's like it's like a pretty painting. Mm. 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 It, it uses. Even though it's sort of like a two D um, game, it doesn't look like it's, um, it's got sort like of stacking of too much, but it does have some. Yeah, it does have game, some yeah. depth to it, definitely. And then the way that they've used sort of like a, you know, a little bit of a blur on those um, mm. sort of backgrounds just to take it out of focus. Um, yeah, works quite well. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. I don't know what's going on in the story. There's like some mushroom people, I think, or something. I I, I don't know. Um, it might have a deeper meaning to it. And just... 
Oh, I don't know, mushroom. but it's very pretty to look at. It's 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 art in motion, and mm. I'm enjoying it just purely for that. So, nice. which like games for me don't have to be gameplay uh, first and foremost for mm-hmm. me. You no, know, I can just enjoy looking at something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. So if that's everything you um, want to discuss. Lucy, yes. Um, rather than one of us launching into uh, our topics, Adam, are you ready for another beer, perhaps? You're muted. Oh, he's muted. He's muted. You're muted. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk now. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. That's that's a joke only for the video. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I just need to rinse my glass out. Cool. Um, so I'll do that forthwith. Okay. Mm. Cool. Get that to the Ikea. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't imagine the beer at all. Can't it, imagine. It sounds. It's, uh, I know. It just the way he was described, it was just like wow. Yeah. It sounded like when he said sour cream. <laughs> I was just like no. But it sounds like one of those very experimental beers a deal that just like needs to be tasted yeah just to see what on earth happened but what's this you didn't the beer, your you beer just it's just yeah, yeah it seems like so intriguing that it's it's worth the cost of admission just to see what the hell went i on mean there. that's basically why i had to buy it and try it and then obviously <laughs> i was going to try it on on, on the podcast because it's so it's more weird curious. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it is a sour. It does linger with some slight tropical and cucumber notes. Um, it is less thick than it looked like, I think, in the end. It was. Mm-hmm. Um, it has this creaminess and flavor, but not a thickness in the in the liquid. Um, okay. And it does all the things. I can see all the things that it says it is, and they're not too strong, and they're melded reasonably, but also they're those things, and... Yeah. It's like, a, yeah, you set out to do you something. Did. You did the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe you and, shouldn't and this, have. <laughs> and this is, um, oh, so it does have lactose in it, okay. which explains where I'm getting the creaminess, mm-hmm. etc. from. I missed that, and the, I didn't realize, well, because it's, um, it doesn't present Polish as an Greek. adjunct. Yeah. yeah. Sorry? It doesn't present itself as an adjunct. It's Is it under the uh, allergens instead, perhaps? I know it was it, it was actually it's yeah I just missed that there was a clear listing of English ingredients after the mm. Polish ones um but yeah it I don't it, it it's a thing and it's not bad and it's worth trying if you can track it yeah. down nice uh, like like it like I said it does all the things on the tin it's not something I'm gonna run out and buy another one of mm. um, yeah, but it wasn't a bad beer. I drank it reasonably quickly. Um, I actually one of the things I like the most about it is that its finish is slightly more sour and longer. Mm. Um, and it, so it felt like a, so oddly enough, it feels more like I was drinking a sour now that I've stopped drinking it. Right. Okay. Just because I think my biggest complaint is the lack of carbonation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like oddly enough, it's not the hey, this kind of does remind me of tzatziki that makes me feel like it's not beery enough. It's just that it's not be or enough because it, it didn't have enough carbonation but... yeah that's yeah. fair yeah that's fair. anyway uh, enough about beer number two this is beer no- or beer number one this is beer number two mm. a bottle a bottle from bristol beer factory nice. it is the espresso martini Ooh. espresso milk stout jo- dark chocolate malt coffee Ooh. lactose this collaboration between two independent Bristol creatives takes BBS classic super smooth milk stout and has dark roasted Wogan's coffee, shaken not stirred. Welcome to Espresso Martini. Made with barley and wheat, contains milk lactose. Something something seed neck. <laughs> Best before, I imagine. It, correct. <clears throat> nice. um, but yeah, so uh, another local uh, beer, but... Uh, a coll- another collab but with Wogan Coffee, which I didn't know was a... Have you been, fellow Br- Bristolian, heard of Wogan Coffee? Yes. Yeah. Oh, where where are they? Um, you know, part of oh. the podcast no one else will be interested in. <laughs> um, is Wogan Coffee the one by what used to be Staples? 
right down by Cabot Circus, just off the moat. Terry ride. Wogan. Really? Yeah. Terry Wogan died, didn't he? Who? Terry Wogan? Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. I don't think that's right, quite, I don't think he's related to this coffee company. <laughs> but you are correct. It appears mm. to be just off of the Cabot Circus parking lot. Yes. I just had never heard of it for somehow. Mm. Some, yeah, or somehow. No oh, I know words. Anyway, um, so I'm hoping for more bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to open a beer from Fallen Acorn Brewing Company. It's an 8.7% HDHC Dipper. There's a lot of small bubbles there. I don't know what HDHC uh, means. Um, um, let's have a look at it. the... I mean, it's it's high-definition hardcore. Yeah, yeah, very good. 720p. I don't even know what this beer is called. Um, it does say hoppiness by the kilowatt further up the can. Um, I picked a lot it up of wattage some... in your beer, isn't it? I know, I know. What's going on this week? Um, there is flavour text. So this is continuous happiness. Well, this is what it looks like to us. Introducing our double IPA, hit with a high density hop charge. Well, that's the HDHC, I guess. High density hop charge, and heavy dry hop of Citra, Mosaic, Amarillo, and Chinook. Juicy hits of dank mango, peach, and citrus, and an ABV to make you ask, and where has all of the day gone? Um, <laughs> what else is there? That's it. Yeah, eight point seven percent. Malted barley, <laughs> malted wheat, malted oats. That's the allergens. Doesn't give me any of the other ingredients. Uh, people don't like telling you their yeast these days, do they? No. They don't know it, what it, the yeast is. There, there was like this thing in like maybe late 2018 through most of 2019, but not quite the whole year, where all the labels suddenly had like the malts and the yeast, including mm. the like, oh, it's this weird version of this malt. It's not just a barley, but it's like some, you know st george's barley of the third um and now uh <laughs> and now it's, yeah it's very much like a are you allergic to this it's regular beer ingredients mm. and some allergens and go die in a fire we have some art yeah yeah <laughs> you don't want to know where they get their yeast from oh. it's from, like scrapes off the floor tiles and oh i'm glad you went that way yummy I was not going to go the other yeah, way. That's fine. We, don't, we can just move on. <laughs> How is your beer, Adam? Um, so, ooh. It's actually got a, quite a crisp nose. Like, there's something... Mm -hmm. Oh, um, it might actually just be the sweetness of the lactose just evening out the nose. So there's like a... You get this hit of the maltiness and a bit of a coffee, and then it's like... I think the sweetness um, is just rounding out the nose so it's quite a quick nose mm -hmm. it has all those notes and then you're kind of like oh yeah okay hmm so i've got a cat growl or mumbling at me i decided to wake up in the middle of i think it's probably because i rinsed a glass that he's like oh movement and now he's confused on whether he wants pets or to leave um <laughs> which is fine for me to talk about while i'm digesting hmm. uh acclimatizing this taste so, um, interestingly enough, I'm getting the dark chocolate very strongly. Mm -hmm. And with that, on the finish, it's got um, a bitterness that comes along with it as well. Like, this is like a proper dark chocolate taste. Um, but with the lactose, that, like, drying bitterness plus lactose sweetness is kind of fucking me up with an aspartame me feel okay. in the finish which is not a thing i want mm. um and there are roasted notes here uh from the coffee and probably the malts as well but they're being overpowered by this sort of hollow sweetness of like that's very reminiscent of aspartame right mm -hmm. in the actual taste it's got just enough oh i forgot i think i didn't mention it's 4.5 percent, so a light stout um once again, light stack from you. Mm hmm. What am I doing? I need to start not looking at, hey, a stout, I like those, and then going, um. <laughs> um no, but it, it, I think it's it, it's not betrayed by this 4.5%. Like, there's enough going on here. I think the lactose is helping 
give it more texture so it doesn't feel thin. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm getting the coffee and I'm getting the chocolate right away. Um, and then it kind of fade well, as they fade away. The lactose kind of comes in and gives it a sweetness, and there's like a literal sweet spot where all three are just in a perfect place. But then, as the sweetness sort of stays where it is, and the chocolate and roastedness kind of fade a bit more, that's when that more aspartame hollowness comes in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a fan of espresso martinis, and this isn't really conjuring that specific taste up mm -hmm. um it, i mean if you didn't call it espresso martini like he says covering it, and you just said espresso milk stout i'd be like cool i get what you're doing because there's some coffee tastes and they're kind of it's kind of more harsh roasted bitter yeah. coffee than like it's just a general like uh coffee milk stout or something like that like it definitely feels more espresso-y because the bitterness is stronger um, it's a little more burnt tasting. Like it just feels like a stronger coffee. Mm -hmm. um, the dark chocolate, I feel like the more I'm acclimatizing, the less I'm noticing it, unfortunately. But again, luckily the aspartaminess is also fading as my whole palate just stays a bit coated. But mm. uh, it feels a little more like a mishmash. Like things are being tried and they're like, there's just like kind of jarring movements between these things. And there isn't as much cohesion as I was hoping. Um, and part of that is I was expecting something to taste a little more like an espresso martini, which just isn't just like the, the martini part is just not in this, right? Except that it's booze. Um, it's, this is a, this is like a chocolatey espresso stout would be probably a better way of saying mm -hmm. it, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you um, think if, it, if they'd have bumped up the um, ABV that it might have felt a little bit more? Like if you'd have had a little bit more of a boozy Yeah, possibly. Um, I don't actually know what what the average espresso martini's alcohol is. I'm assuming it's not gin like a regular martini. Probably oh, vodka because that's more tasteless. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, it has less of a strong taste. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't misinterpret that. I'm not dissing vodka. Um, but yeah, I think maybe um, it's not that boozy, which is fine. I like the finish is more sort of rounded chocolatey with a bit of coffee burntness. Um, and like I said, now that I, I've sat with it for a bit, that aspartame taste has gone away, which is really good. So, I mean, maybe by the end, I mean, my opinion changed on the last beer as well. So maybe by the end of this one, I'll have, uh, I'll have, or at least, you know, further in. Obviously, I'm not going to keep talking about it mm -hmm. while I drink it. But like by the end, I might have a more nuanced opinion of it. I do feel like this is definitely a beer you're, you're wanting to sip slowly. Yeah. Just because there's a lot going on, and 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 it does seem to be changing a bit. Um, I think if you sort of drank this quickly as a like 4.5 percent sort of sessionable stout, you'd be disappointed because you would just hit these sort of awkward taste moments that I hit in the beginning and not really get what it seems to be blossoming into something. And I'm curious about. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so that's thus far mm. of the BBF WC espresso martini. Ooh, WC is a bad acronym, Mogan Coffee. Um, ben, how's yours? Um, it's nice. It's nice. Uh, it had a very, very um, a again, like it's it's got a it's got a light nose, like the verdant before it. So like it, it, it has a light nose, and uh, on the can it said it was mango and peach and a bit of citrus, and you're getting maybe a little bit more of the mango in on the nose. Um, but it, it kind of feels like there's this not quite weedy dankness to it but more of this sort of it is a dankness but it's a very wet sort of dankness it's like a damp kind of dankness it's 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 dank it's weedy but it's very very light um, which doesn't come across in the in the flavor actually it's a little bit darker than the last beer um, again nice lacing on the um, on mm. the glass from it but in the flavour, you very much get that peach through. And that is kind of the big flavour. That is the one that is presented the most to you. And that mango and maybe a little bit of, of citrus is just underneath that, just elevating that kind of peach flavour. And I'm not the biggest fan of peach, but 
the combination of these things is very nice. It's a, it's a very pleasant tasting beer. Um, but there's no dankness to be seen. Mm. There's no bitterness in this whatsoever. It presents as a big kind of peach flavor. And it's not like, it's not the same flavor as when you have a peach. It's more of like a concentrated peach flavor when you have like a yogurt, say. Um, you know, it's not the it's not the fruit as such. It's but it's not an artificial flavor. It's just it. I think it says on it sort of um, high density hop charge and heavy dry hop of the of the hops that they've chosen. Um, mm -hmm. That it is big. It's a big peach flavor. Um, it, it just feels more than it would do if it was a fruit. And as I say, I think it's the mango kind of underlying that and, and bumping it up a little bit. But it does come across more, a little bit more artificial in the in the peach than sort mm. of a natural fruity kind of peach flavour, which is fine. I have absolutely no problem with that at all. It's 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 a big punch of this flavour, so they want something that is big. Um, but that's kind of it. That's all that it's doing, really. There's not much more to this beer mm. at all. Okay. Huh. I like the peach yogurt. I had a peach yogurt this morning. Mm, nice. It's very nice. Mm. So, sounds better than the sour cream. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this isn't. It's not very dry. Um, it's not very wet either. It's 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 kind of middling. So the flavour sticks around for a reasonable amount of time. Um, expected because there's no kind of bitterness in there drying me out at all. It's only maybe now that it's starting to dry out a little bit, but that peach flavour lasts, and it sits with me. And I don't have to go back to the beer to get another yeah. hit, because I'm not experiencing, you know, several flavours flowing through from start to finish. It's like, here it is, here's the flavour, this is it. So I just sit here thinking, okay, cool, it's nice, I'll go back to it when I want a little bit more of that. But currently, yeah. it's still lasting. I'm still feeling that flavour from it. So, yeah. Easy drinking for eight and a half, eight point seven percent 8.7%. <laughs> dangerous, though. Extremely mm. dangerous. If it had a bit of bitterness to it, or I could tell that there was a little bit more booze in this, then maybe yeah. I'd drink it slightly slower. But it ain't happening. There you go. You'll be asking where where did the day go? Exactly, I where will be asking that. So, I mean, I had a, maybe I, if I'd have had it, you know, mid afternoon. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> but unfortunately, I know exactly where the day is gone. Um, let's move on from our beers and, and drink these. Uh, Adam, what would you like to chat about this week? Um, I didn't really play much this week. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we played a bit more Destiny since the last time. Yeah, we recorded. Um, still enjoying it, though. Sort of not being sort of hit some walls of content because, of course, we're only playing the free version. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the lore seems more, the, and like the campaigns seem more locked away or less important than when I've played Destiny One, which is I know I'm not the right person like the target because i really liked the world building and the lore of destiny one um and so i was like i think that's actually why i sort of fell off of d2 when it first came out because i played like a little bit was because it wasn't sort of plot focused mm. um it was like rushed through the plot to get to the end game content to do the loops that the game is designed around and it very much feels like they understand that's what most people are coming for because like there's bits and bobs of plot but most of it is just kind of like onboarding tutorial and like we played a lot more of the the dungeons together mm -hmm. um and because we're two people and a lot of them are designed for three people we would just well someone would start it and run off and we would follow them and often just skip enemies Apparently, you don't have to fight those guys, mm -hmm. and we'd still be kind of behind, and then, then they would kill the boss when we arrived. Like, heaven forbid, <laughs> you fuck up a jumping puzzle, which, boy, did I do a couple times, such that, like, Ben caught up. He hit the boss a couple times. I catch up. Fight is over. <laughs> cool story. 
There's so many um, jumping elements in that game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what I watched was. Yeah. Like, what are they playing? I mean, that was. That just... was actually not even a dungeon. That was mm. just like. That was part of the, <laughs> the, the custom jumping. curated content for new players. But also, it was an extended <laughs> part of that. Like, I don't think we, we haven't really had any other platforming elements quite as <laughs> long as that one. Um, I think it was, you know, very much put in to be like, this is what you might experience through this. Have it for twice as long as you are ever going to experience it again for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. It, those games just seem so. Um, it, it seems daunting to try and get into something that's had such, such a long tail. So, uh -huh. so and, did I, you not play Destiny? Ever before the you I did, but yeah. mm, I I didn't. I, I played. I played the beta for Destiny Two. <laughs> I can't remember where I played it for the first, but I I completely I agree. It, it is daunting, and I think the only reason okay. I have played this and experienced it is because I played it with Adam, and we've been able to yeah. kind of play it together. You know, I I would not have tackled this by myself and tried yeah. to get into it. And it is a game to play with friends, absolutely. Um, you know, probably yeah, best tutor. as a three because most of the strikes are for three yeah. people. Because um, like, just... I I feel like that's the big thing. It's like when we could, we muddled through things together, and it was fun. And like some of the, you know, sometimes it's like get a quest, not sure what to do, figure it out together. That's mm -hmm. fine, even if we're like, I'm not, we're not trying to like rush to the end. So it's fine if it takes a bit to figure it out. But then. As soon as we got into these raids or whatever you call them, strikes. That's mm. it. Um, it's like searching for third player, and then we couldn't figure it out ourselves. Then we were searching for the third player throughout the whole fucking thing. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Like it makes you wait five minutes to match to someone who then fucks off, and you're like, <sighs> "Look, there are a couple times the where we were not." better things to do a deal yeah. and wait for you lot to <laughs> yeah fail your i mean but it was yeah. it was just kind of like um like i don't we're not gonna if we don't immediately know where to go we're not gonna get chap in mm -hmm. time but also there are part other parts of this and it's i mean it's one of the reasons why i played a bit of warframe back in the day and then ended up stopping because i liked playing with the bow and arrow and it was more of like a stealthy pick people off and i could like solo some missions by just literally killing everyone slowly um mm -hmm. but obviously when as soon as you play with someone else they're just like well we need to rush to the end to finish this because it's the third time i'm doing this run or whatever and so i'm like lining up an arrow shot and they I kill one guy and they've like quickly run and shot three guys but run past five more and then they keep going and you're like second arrow <laughs> uh and this like a couple of those fights very much felt like that which is like this is my first i i wish there was a way of being like this is my first time doing this dungeon i'd like to do it properly flag right um because they're clearly well designed and like not only did we skip parts or like not shoot enemies etc because you don't need to it turns out but also mm. so much of it was chasing people that i didn't really appreciate all the design that went into it and that's yeah. a, again one of the reasons i like even forget the lore it's just like a well-designed game like the gunplay is super tight i mm. really like it yes um and so to the point where you're like ah, yeah that guy's you know levels above us but we could still like kill the bad guy because we can aim etc and it, but but when you're doing that so infrequently and you feel like you're just like rushing through an area you don't understand or recognize and the only way the only time we felt more comfortable was when it, we happened to have looped through to the same strike a second or third time and it was like okay now we know what to do it's like okay but now we're still don't know anything about half of the level we just know we need we need to just know how to keep up with this person who's rushing mm -hmm. through and mm -hmm. that's just like mm -hmm. the antithesis to the way i like to play games with people yeah, yeah that's, absolutely. that's not fun no, it's not, and it it really made me think that actually, um, you know, with with Bungie having now like full control over Destiny, um, having having stopped partnering with Activision and come away from that, um, that actually the gunplay is so solid that 
I just want a little corridor shooter from them. You know, just a single player, little corridor shooter. They can call it Destiny, that wizard came from the moon, and everyone would buy it. And it's just a little five or six hour single player corridor shooter using mm-hmm. those shooting mechanics because they are tight, they're really solid. Um, they're good. Uh, it's just all the other fucking multiplayer bullshit yeah. that, that drags yeah, it down. Yeah, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I played. I was telling you like this over the week, and I played the beta for the first game. I was like, "This feels so good." Mm. And I turned it off because <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm, that, I'm, I'm just like the whole space you? opera kind of um, setting anyway. But I was just like, "What is this convoluted thing that they're calling it MMO, but isn't it MMO?" Mm-hmm. It was just mm-hmm. there's some hub world. It, it was, I mean most games do that now so destiny yeah, was very much you know uh, you know leading the lining that um for better or worse but uh, yeah <laughs> it's just like yeah give me give me a shooty shooty game six hours <laughs> with those as you say really good mechanics and then yeah, yeah but um no it's it's it's, it's, it's a lot mm. <laughs> you know it is it it's is people a lot. talk about Destiny ad nauseum are just um, where's the muzzle? <laughs> <laughs> it it probably... seems like one of those game, all-encompassing games. Where it's yeah. just like I do not understand this. You know, We're not, why not... you, you you hate the game? Everyone who talks about the game hates the game, and yet they play it. It's like it's uh, just like that's because there's really this... tight bits, right? Like that's it's Stockholm syndrome, mate. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. you're not wrong. Yeah. yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean that's like other than that, I haven't really played many games this week. Mm-hmm. Uh for various scheduling reasons, my usual ha, I streamed on Tuesdays. Um thus I will always have a thing to talk about now. Uh just didn't happen. Uh we, we sort of had to rejig some things, so now mm-hmm. I will be streaming that on Thursday, it sounds like. Um so maybe next week I'll have more than one game to talk about, Ooh. shock and awe. Um but uh the the other thing I wanted to bring up was just uh i i boy stadia's a train wreck um <laughs> i'm like we're not a super newsy uh thing but i think it's worth bringing up if people haven't noticed um <laughs> no one know. noticed <laughs> no well, one would have noticed so a couple things happened right in the past couple of weeks told us that the shut you is down Nobody. Yeah, so they shut the, the the internal studios for Stadia down. Um, so I'm getting yelled at by a furry thing. Um, they, How dare and, it. Yeah, right? Hmm. Uh, so Henry. they shut the studios down. Um, the shitty thing that you can like watch the gym position on is, uh, is days before they announced that they were shuttering the studios, they had sent glowing... Um, email to the head of the studio sent a glowing email to everyone saying hey we're so proud of all the things you're doing we're, we've got like an announcement coming up about our like plans and schedule of Call it an developments yeah, f- uh, for the year uh, and then they envelope. yeah and <laughs> then they um, then they cancel it, it just, it's that it's schedule just, just, of events no. yeah. yeah it's either your P45 or a new Ferrari. Yeah. Um, and so, like, that's gotten some reasonable press, but if you're not familiar, that's, like, obviously a shitty thing to do, because mm. you didn't have to send the email to, like, float people up right right before you literally yeah, shit-canned them. Um, like, they, they probably sent that just as a, you know, it was probably on a uh, draft email and stenciled. Oh, it's, it's like, like, yeah, oh, that... that... Oh, yeah. Yeah, here's, I, our, here's our quarterly profits. We did amazingly, but you're fired. It's yeah. like every company does that. So Absolutely. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just the timing was obviously totally insensitive. Um, I don't care. Uh, yeah, and, and so I don't think the cruelty is the point, like Jim says. Uh, I think it, I think Lucy's read on it is, is, is much more accurate, which is this was just a thing that was set up and scheduled by some intern or PA um, mm-hmm. and and they just didn't bother. No one thought about, hey, that thing's in the books. What's it going to be like in three days? Because the cruelty yeah. is like 
the I don't give a shit move is much more plausible than I'm trying to be cruel just for the sake of it. Mm. Just because yeah. they are aware of PR disasters, right? Because um, that affects them somewhat. So we're talking about like 150 developers. Um, but uh, <laughs> one of the things that has come out of this that hasn't had as much press that I just don't want to talk about because I think people lose sight of what these acquisitions mean, especially when they're by multi billion dollar corporations who have are not gaming focused entirely or have other things to do and other priorities mm -hmm. um so typhon studios um are the ones who were developing journey to the savage planet oh yeah which when yeah, google quick. bought yeah so when google bought them it became a uh not stadia is exclusive but one of the few free games on stadia uh, for mm -hmm. those of you who don't know, Stadia obviously was set up to fail because you had to rebuy your games on Stadia, only some of which were free on Stadia Pro. Um, so you would be streaming a game that you never owned, or but, but streaming games you never owned was one thing, but also streaming games but paying $60 for the privilege of streaming games was the essential conceit of Stadia. Crazy. Um, yeah. So Especially when the, 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 they're appealing to a more casual market who mm. don't have a gaming PC, who don't have a console, they're it's not like, going to... They're going to go for Game Pass. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, it was doomed to fail. Oh, We're not sure. surprised that Stadia ended up closing down their internal studios because it's a failed venture. But... Mm. Um, so Typhon Studios stopped being an independent studio and started being part of Google. Yeah. So when was... Google shut its doors on its development team it included every member of the previous team known as Typhon Studios. They're all unemployed now. Mm. Which which sucks because it's like that studio literally is a few years old before they got acquired. And it's like, yeah. yes, your money, of course, take it. They've got families to feed. And now that's just completely blown up. And it's like... Yeah. And yeah, I think Journey to the Savage Planet is a very good game. It's like obviously so, Thomas is fighting and then so, the head of the studios. I like his games and his mm. personality. But it came under some flack over yeah. some stupid Twitter thing, which was ridiculous. But um, he was just saying like, oh, maybe streamers should pay for the privilege of oh, you know yes. streaming games. Well, not yeah. even should, but it's a conversation that mm -hmm. could happen. Yeah, but. Yeah, it's 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 sad because it's like, uh, I mean, hopefully they can. I don't know if the, the the conditions are right given the whole financial instability of the pandemic. But it'd nice to be see. It'd, it'd be nice to see them get back together and, and like form Typhon two. two. Yeah, but you just think Tufan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, it gets worse though because like so one thing it's sort of it's easy to think oh a group of developers at at, at Google lost their jobs. I um, hope they can. But right, but actually what it is is Google acquired functional seemingly profitable studios and then didn't they don't get spun back out. They just get disbanded. Mm. But it gets weirder because um Journey to the Savage Planet which only just got released to Stadia Pro, Stadia Pro recently, has mm -hmm. run into a string of bugs. So this is from a Kotaku art article on it, um, including freezing on the main menu, crashing, and hanging. So the problem here is, because it's Stadia, you don't have access to any of the files, so you have no ability to troubleshoot. Turns yeah. out these bugs are bugs on the Google system, and so they are 100% replicatable and 100% unsolvable as the nature of the beast of streaming the game running on a different PC is. Brilliant. So, current publisher 505 Games get is is getting support emails from people, um, and they've had to say um, first, so there's two e emails I'm going to read verbatim from this Kotaku article because it's so choice and exactly what I wanted to bring up about how we have to pay attention to what streaming is and what amalgamation means. So, dear person, thank you for contacting 505 Game Support. We're currently looking into this. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do from our end right now since all of the game code and data on Stadia is owned by Google. Please do not, do not hesitate to contact us uh, should you need further assistance. Best 505 Game Support. 
So yeah, that was like a blanket. You're having problems. Contact Stadia. Yeah, I, I think that's a bit crappy, though. Like, it, it, you know, like, okay, it's not on 505, but they are, you know, this is a person reaching out because they're obviously having issues. Maybe mm-hmm. yeah. don't lay out because this person probably has no idea, maybe doesn't have any idea, like, this happened. So yeah, it's like absolutely. That. Okay, so, so this is where we get to... Um, the second email, which I, I will read the whole long thing, which, again, I don't think is the best response from a 505 from a PR standpoint, but I think it really highlights exactly how fucked this game is and Stadia users are. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your reply. Please note that the publisher for Journey of the Savage Planet on Stadia is, in fact, Stadia Games and Entertainment Google LLC. And unfortunately, we have no way of assisting with this kind of issue from our end, we suggest reaching out to Stadia support again and informing them that the publisher for the Stadia version of Journey to the Savage Planet is actually them. Please allow also let the agent know that Typhoon Studios, the developer of Journey to the Savage Planet, has been acquired by Google Stadia in 2019, which means they should have more information about this situation. As mentioned before, we do not have access to the game's code and data since it's owned by Google, and therefore we're unable to assist in resolving code-related glitches we hope you understand, and please do not hesitate to contest us should you need further information. So the point I wanted to bring up is um, the way Google acquired it, they became the publisher of the game for their own platform as well. Mm-hmm. So not only does 505 have no, is the dev, or is the publisher not the dev, so they have no way to fix code-based glitches. These code-based glitches are currently seemingly only affecting the Stadia platform, and Absolutely. actually, the way Google acquired it, they acquired both the publishing and developing of it. And so, actually, 505 isn't even a Stadia. Like, they, they're just not a contact for Stadia. Yeah. Because yeah. on both ends, it's Google. And Google's basically said, fuck this and fuck this game. <laughs> yeah. And it's like... Yeah. It's it's crappy for the consumers. Because, like, it, you know, someone reading that email might be thinking, who's Typhon Studios? <laughs> I just bought this cool Absolutely. looking game. Yeah. yeah. I think the second email is it was a follow up, wasn't it? Which is better, but it's just like I mean on. it still doesn't help the consumer unfortunately, mm-hmm. but also yeah. it kinda of shows off that they're like, I literally can't do anything. I mean ideally they'd be like, We've found a contact for all these things. Please like yeah. I feel like that's the part that the PR slash support for five oh five can do because is they're they're Google. the publisher of the rest. Like they have some stake in it. Their their yeah. name is attached to the game even if it isn't the game on this platform but it also just shows how google was very happy to take on publishing of the the game for stadia and then is just as happy to kind of let that responsibility just float into the ether like well, people joked about a uh, google abandoning stadia because they abandoned all the things but i think i don't think sometimes you realize people realize how much actually that affects especially when it's an not a new space right it's not like google plus where they hired a bunch of people to try and make a a new twitter remember that oh that really worked um (laughs) right so then they just fired all these developers they hired specifically for this task right but in this Mm -hmm. case stadia was buying up studios and developers um as well as um creating an ecosystem for consumers to directly interact with that when they pull, started pulling the plugs, everyone involved is getting sort of screwed on on different angles, um, right? And so when we get more of these mergers and acquisitions, we're going to get more of these. We're running a big risk of getting more of these situations where, like, it's a hot potato of responsibility. Like, yeah. I get five hundred five, and I uh, not being responsible, but also, I thought that was a crappy email. Like, uh, yeah. You see- they, they just, you know, probably typed into Google, you know, customer support for this game. Theirs was the first thing that came up because it's on more platforms than Stadia. It, it, it's, mm-hmm. it's, they're literally the, the publisher for every non-Stadia platform. It's exactly, yeah, not absolutely. unforeseen that a consumer might go the wrong way, right? It's like how many times like, like um, on Giant Bomb they used to say that they used to get emails about you know, just people having tech issues in games because it was like you type a game and and it immediately they the goes bomb.com because yeah. they have like a wiki of all these games. 
you wouldn't reply saying, oh, you know, unfortunately, gig. I, I just think it was a really in bad taste from. I mean, five oh five is just awful anyway, so it doesn't surprise me. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. So I agree, and uh, it's it's like no one's winning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> I don't like that. I, I, I've come off dating 505 more than Google with that, but um, I know they've been very generous to us with giving us codes, but like, come on, guys. Yeah. Customer service is. Step okay. up, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. I think absolutely. That's, the, that's the bit that sucks, is they're not stepping up. But yeah, it, it, it is fascinating because I think we knew that Google. As you say, like it was doomed to fail at the beginning, but you thought they'd give it a little bit more push. But it's just like this has not only failed from like a marketing and just care point of view from Google, but also on a technical mm. uh, level where it's like, yes, they don't have access to the code, so they can't patch the game. It's just that's crazy. Yeah, like, absolutely. <laughs> that there's no you, one, there's no one left why, to be able to uh, fix these issues. Yeah. And that's why there's no reason to have faith in it because mm. not because you don't think the publishers behind it you, you know do you think Google's behind it but also because something is so tenuous as that it's like we got rid of the people there's nothing we can do now mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, oh. yeah. it's just not good on any mm. angle and very bad on every angle yes absolutely yeah. Ah, okay. Um, it's not that good anyway. <laughs> what is dead? Like the, it's dead now, right? The, yeah, the technology seemed like it could be promising, but mm-hmm. I think, um, I mean, Google will license out that tech to to other companies, and it will be stuff that we never see, and it will be stuff in the background that we don't notice. But yeah, I, I, I'd like to see. That kind of technology uh, get improved on, yeah. Because it is, it, 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 it's. I would just love to be like, don't have to download. Um, what's a anything? Big game? <laughs> yes, anything. Ideally, I don't mind downloading three hundred megabytes of some uh, uh, indie game, but mm. you uh, don't want an eighty could... gig. You don't want to have to worry yeah. about an eighty gig download every, you know, couple of weeks. Because the new thing is about, like, yeah. Yeah. Where I don't have to, like, worry about downloading cloud saves, although mm. I might. I don't know how seamless Castadia was with that. Um, and just, yeah, pick it up on any computer. Um, yeah. As I say, I think Microsoft are probably just uh, our only hope, really, with that kind of. Um, does does well, seem that way. Hope, they're, they're, they're pushing for it. And it's yeah. like, yes, they, they seem to actually care. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, we'll see how that one shakes out as well hey, when they get bored. Mm. I, th- I think um, everything that I've heard about um, Game Pass on like Android is mm. is, is good. Like they're, they're implementing like using touch controls as well. Um, oh, nice. In like, normal games, mm. it's like okay, this game has touch controls now. You don't you don't need a controller mm. so. Seems like that's steadily grown into the more um, ubiquitous platform, which is which is good. Good. The nice. game should just be accessible at this point. Absolutely, like, completely. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to update the drivers. It's a it's a a bit of an awkward segue, but it does lead me on quite well to the game I want to talk about: accessibility. Right. Mm. Um. Before I do, we, we're all finished with Stadia chat. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, oh, before we move on to Stadia, off from Stadia, there was a, did anyone play that game Submerged? No. Oh, okay. Small indie game. Is that the EA game? No. Mm, ew, that's another one. Sea of, that's Sea of Solitude. It's uh, kind of, it's not similar. It's I did like play Submerged, a yes. Well, you're, it's, yeah. it's on a boat as well, isn't it? You're, you're moving between different yeah. sort of islands and buildings and stuff, yes. Really peaceful, tranquil mm-hmm. game. Yep. And a sequel to that came out on Stadia last year. Really? And really? I, yeah. I had no idea until... I can't remember where I saw it. It might have... I don't know. It might have been on like one of those Stadia Link stories. But mm-hmm. I was just like... What? 
It's like a Stadia exclusive. Wow. It's like, I would play the sequel to that game. That was people, very calm, people be taking Google's money and running away. Hmm. For some people, at least. Uh, Not everyone. Yeah. yeah. I, kept the, I hope they didn't get swallowed up. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, anyway, stay me over. I think um, that'll be the last time anyone talks about it, really. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> true. And, and to yeah. the final death knell, when we have a conversation about, oh, it's dead. Okay, cool, let's move on. Um, uh, yes, I've been playing a game called Shattered, um, Tale of the Forgotten King, mm-hmm. which um, I got a code for from uh, Player2PR. Um, it released back on the 17th of February, so a few days ago. And it is a, it's like a Souls-like game, but it kind of, it's not that it tries not to be, right? Mm -hmm. It just tries to inhabit a different, a slightly different space. It's like an action RPG, as as Dark Souls is, okay? It's an action RPG, but it it hits a lot of the same kinds of beats. Um, It's very stylish. In the way that it looks, it's got a very muted kind of color palette, lots of grays and, um, and and kind of blues, but you do get a few more lush environments with quite stark kind of um, aesthetic looks to them, which is great. I'm, I'm only about seven hours in, and I understand it's maybe about a thirty-ish hour game. Oh, wow. um, but uh, so far, I'm enjoying it. But I'm getting frustrated with it at the same time, right? And a lot of that comes from um, the two main elements of the game, which is, like Destiny, combat and Mm. platforming. And the combat is kind of like Dark Souls. It's very much, um, you know, heavy sword swings, dodging out of the way. You've got a stamina bar. You've got to conserve that kind of thing. Enemies are big and hard, and they hit really hard and stuff. But I've, I've got to grips with that. It's kind of the thing that I'm, like, all right at. And I'm kind of just okay with parrying attacks from enemies, although not bosses. I die a lot on bosses at the moment. Um as you would expect. Uh, But in both the combat, it's the movement, which also relates to the platforming kind of aspect, which doesn't quite work. It's very, very floaty. It's very Mm. soft. You don't feel kind of like heavy. There's no lock on button, or at least if there is, I haven't discovered it yet. But I kind of have to move my character around to make sure I'm swinging in the right kind of place to hit things and when I dodge I can kind of dodge in a certain direction but a lot of the time I'm uh, missing the the reach of characters so I'm missing my reach and knowing how close I need to be to an enemy to actually hit them and I'm missing an enemy's reach and I'm not getting far enough away from them and a lot of that, I think, is to do with not being able to, or, or, or not locking on, and it just kind of being a free camera following this character in third person going around. Um, and that, that, that equates to the, um, the platforming as well. Uh, I, will, I will jump up on something, and I'm like, didn't make that, and just fall into oblivion and die. Like, brilliant. Okay. Uh, I, I obviously needed to jump and then dodge just to give me that little bit of extra reach in this bit, even though it was close enough that when I just jumped, I kind of just hit the edge. You know, if it was just that little bit that way, I'd have been fine. And if it was just that little bit farther away, it would have telegraphed that I should have also dodged and had to use the extra stamina to have moved. So there's a few little elements around this game which are really frustrating. Mm. But I find myself coming back to it I find myself enjoying it just enough that I want to play through it and I want to progress a little bit. And whilst combat, again, is frustrating in terms of the reach and understanding things, some of the boss battles, some of just the normal movement through the environments and and, and fighting enemies does feel good. 
and, okay. and, and kind of as we were talking about earlier like there's there is a sense that i could just run past a lot of enemies and i wouldn't need to do anything i just need to get from a to b and that will move me into the next sort of section um but obviously there's no then progression um the, the same as like dark souls as soon as i kill something i get essence which is what it's called in this and that allows me to upgrade myself uh, because it's an RPG, so there's obviously upgrade mechanics and, uh, and and those sorts of things. You know, upgrading your weapon, upgrading yourself, and it's quite a you know it's quite an in-depth kind of game. It's it's, it's deep. It's got some systems to it that that you can kind of game a little bit around to tailor to your playstyle. It's just janky enough that it doesn't quite sort of um, you know meet meet a a bar of, yeah. of, of what I was kind of expecting from it um, which is a shame because it looks and it feels like a lot of love has gone into this mm. it, 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 it's just almost like it's not rushed it's just maybe not fully realised mm -hmm. I suppose yeah. um, and they've gone yep this is good this feels fine that's what it will be and then not returned you know gone this is this is the combat we're happy with that let's now yeah. make a bigger world to explore let's now concentrate on putting items over here and items over here so people have to do all of these jumpy bits to get up to very obscure sorts of places and yeah. it, you know it, it, it kind of feels like um a, a sort of a dark souls in that it wants you to explore it wants you to kind of you know go to the edges of the map and look for things and jump on top of what you can and kind of vertically and horizontally explore as much as possible and it puts characters with a little bit of dialogue in very obscure places but the one thing that's very very good actually excellent in this game and much better than i've seen in a lot of similar style games is that it links its spaces very very well so okay. you can you can spend five minutes making your way through a space and trying to kill or dodge enemies and get out of the way and kind of going up here and then going over here and coming back down here and then making your way to kind of point B and realizing that there is a gate. I'm like, oh, I can knock the lock off from this side of this gate and instantly you're back at point A. And you're like, great, Very fantastic. I've, I've, I've done that element of progression. I've worked my th way through this. If I want to go back to the central hub area where I can upgrade myself, I can come back to point A and I can instantly walk through to point B. And I've done that section. It's very good in that. I, I know that I have done it. I have progressed through. And then it rewards me with that little fast travel element. And that has progressed as I've played in different areas. It's maintained that. It hasn't sort of been like, it just does it for this one. It has mm. kept that up throughout all of these. Yeah. And it links spaces very, very well. Which is, which is for, for one of these kinds of games, is, is quite a key sort of feature. I need to feel like I'm making some kind of progress around the world rather than it just being, you know, like a corridor shooter. You move between levels, you just do that bit, and you go, this is, it is sort of open world, but you need to have done certain bits to be able to then access the fast travel, not fast travel, but the kind of the gates and the doorways to be able to sort of move through. So it, 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 it's planned its spaces out very, very well. I just wish it wasn't quite so floaty to mm. have to move through all of these things um and I'll, I'll probably have some more thoughts next week on it as i've i've played a little bit more i'll find some more time um, you know again i might not have finished it next week um based on how much i've been able to play um since i've got the code i'll probably have played another five six seven hours you know about the same amount of time again so i probably won't have finished it but i can tell you whether i spent only an extra hour with it and binned it or whether i did want to continue kind of uh through with it or not but at the moment it's holding me that's good yeah i like not um, every game has to be eight out of ten or anything like oh, that. oh, oh completely yeah, yes yeah it's just power yeah. through games 
it's like, yeah, I'm not a fan of this and that and A, B and C, but there's something there. Just yeah, absolutely. Dragging you through that experience. Yeah, it's, it's good that you want to go back, given that yeah. you have concerns that are pulling you in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it, it, it also does very well in um, allowing you small increments of progress as well so like with dark souls where you have the bonfires uh, this game mm. has what they call wells but it's a big um uh, it's a big pier uh, or uh, like a, a pillar okay. and you basically touch yeah. it and it lights up and that is your regen point and they're they're pretty frequent which is nice because every time you hit one you're like well i've got all of this essence Mm -hmm. which I can use and now I can either decide if I want to go somewhere else or do something else and, but at least I've saved my progress and they're frequent enough that I can play for 30 minutes and be like yeah. right cool I've hit one of these I've touched it all of the enemies regen because it's mm. a, a souls like kind of game uh, but I've you know I've unlocked this thing so I can miss 10 of them and only have to fight 2 of them to get back to that same right. sort of point Right. Um, so yeah the, the progression and the way that the maps link just just works very very well and is satisfying um, and again it's got this like grungy very blocky kind of aesthetic I like it. yeah yeah, yeah. Like, I, I saw you pop up playing it was it last week and so mm. oh, what's that and I'm like oh that's very pretty yeah and it is <laughs> it is pretty yeah. even though for the first few sort of levels it's it, it's quite hard but it has it's it's hard, but it has an ethereal an ethereal quality to it as well. So lots of sort of like glowing lights and that, whilst being very blocky in its aesthetic. Um, mm. But the characters are are very well designed and look beautiful, even if they are pretty static uh, when you're kind of talking to them. It the the, the story is that dark souls level of fucking nonsense um <laughs> do you mean yeah. like lore that you need to dig into that it doesn't present so or... it's 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 presenting it at a reasonable pace but i still got no idea what it's trying to tell me or what's <laughs> going on um there's a king he and he created the world that's who we're looking to find these other beings turned up and fuck stuff up and now you're inhabiting that space the fucked up space by these beings um so that yeah that's yeah that's kind of it so far so we'll see we'll see how how well that delves into other stuff i've spent some resources when i got to a certain point opening up more uh, exposition given to me I'm like okay cool sure i still don't know what's going on all you've told me about is stuff that's happened uh kind of how this all links together is still a little bit fuzzy and airy um mm -hmm. but more and more is being uncovered so i would imagine mm -hmm. if you do get through to the end you'll have a um a slightly more rounded idea of what's happening with the world than you do in dark souls i, I know those those games are notorious for not giving you very much in terms of story i i think this does give you more it just is drip feeding it very very slowly and quite abstractly as well so yeah but but so far so good uh, i mean yeah we'll return to it and see if next week my thoughts are the same or if it's kind of you know expanded a little bit or got better in any mm. sort of um, sort of elements but the issues that i'm having with the say the movement through both the platforming and the combat i don't think is something that's going to be improved so we'll see if there's other elements which um which which hold me a little bit more but it's fun so far so yeah uh shattered there you go. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, that's probably it for us this week then. Yeah. A nice, a nice point to uh, finish on. 
We will return to our beers, though. At all. Yeah, um... They were both interesting beers. Oddly enough, um... If you just presented them me and gave me the description of one... Vis-a-vis uh, -vis the ingredients and how well they worked together, I would have assumed you were talking about the other. Mm -hmm. Um, so... It's one of those things where, yeah, if I was in a pub and I had them on offer, like like it was a choice between them, I would, the one I would have a second time was probably the espresso martini, just because okay. it's a little less out there, uh, but I don't think it's the better beer. Mm. Um, so despite the lack of carbonation on the Corfu Food Advisor, I think it just, it's got a handful of ingredients and it does a very interesting and well made, like. A well-designed beer. Like it stitches all these things together. It's, it, it's none of them sort of jump out or fight each other. It's very well made. It's just a little more unique, generally, as far as those tastes go. That you're not going to like seek it out. And like I said, I, the most disappointing part for me was that it was just a little too flat, such that it felt more like at the times like more like an interesting liquid than an interesting beer. Mm. It still had some some bitterness and some. Um, sort of they had the telltale sour taste but uh, sours are sort of not a standard beer taste so I think when you lose the carbonation you lose a lot when it's just like yes this tastes like a sour but a flat sour this is very non-beer like as a result uh, but again it did all those things so well um, with the knitting and the ingredients and an interesting interplay of them and it grew on me uh, uh, that while the espresso martini I kind of just got used to things and yes the aspartame type taste I was getting in the beginning faded but the rest were um it didn't it, it like so so that thing filled itself in but it never really got replaced with oh now everything's working mm -hmm. it was just like now this thing that was like oh I don't like the taste of aspartame I've gotten used to or my powers is like we've progressed past and now we just have this sort of kind of janky chocolate espresso um taste where yeah i don't taste aspartame but I also i'm not getting a lot out of this it's just more drinkable in that sense and that's like the only thing that really has it above the, the so the only thing that really ranks the espresso martini above the core food 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 advisor is that it's drinkable <laughs> more drinkable and it's like well that's that's not good enough yeah um Especially when obviously the Corfu Food Advisor is swinging for the fences flavor wise. You can't be like, ah, but it's not a standard flavor, so fuck this beer, right? Like, it was never going to be mm -hmm. standard flavor beer. So, uh, partly because uh, it's such a bizarre thing to try, and they did, and but mostly because they succeeded on knitting these flavors together in an interesting way. And parts of it I didn't didn't really match my personal taste, but it's not a like it, it all works in a way, right? Um, and the espresso martini felt more like there were tastes that were kind of fighting each other at times. So it's sure. the uh, Malt Garden and Seven Island Brewery collab, Core Food Food Advisor this week. Nice, good. Um, I think I'm going to be similar to you in that I'm going to pick my first beer for the evening as the one that sticks out a little bit more for me. So um, the 40 Watt Moon from Verdant. I think just has a little bit more going for it than the than the Ford and Acorn, the the Verdant, and as I drank, um, presented a little bit more flavour. So I, I I mentioned that there was a little bit of melon on the nose, and that then came through in the flavour. The more that I drank it, that kind of slight, very light bitterness that it had to it did present a little bit more and 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 came with a, a slightly sort of melon kind of flavor you know maybe a little bit more um not sort of honeydew but maybe like a little bit more sort of like cantaloupe kind of um hmm. flavor that that, that that did appear but was a little bit subdued um with the um with the, I think the mango that I was getting if I can remember correctly um whereas the the fallen acorn was just kind of that one big note and didn't really do very much and 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 as I've drank through that bit it has retained that very very well but it has not done anything more and it's a lovely bit it's very easy to drink 
and I would absolutely recommend it for someone who likes those stone fruit flavours and doesn't want something you know too big or too bitter they just want a solid mm-hmm. stone fruit flavoured you know peach flavoured beer uh, I just I think the 40 watt moon from Verdant does a little bit more is a little bit more balanced and presents just a little bit better um, so that's the um, kind of the pick this week but I would drink both beers again absolutely nice. Uh, especially since I'm not a huge fan of peach, uh, I think the um, the fallen acorn did peach well enough, backed up by other flavours as well, like a mango, um, that uh, it just took it away from it being too intense. Mm. So nice. That's my pick for this week. Um, if you've drank any of these beers or you want to tell us about the beers that you have drank, you can do so in lots of different ways at Tanked Up Cast over on Twitter. We're the same on Instagram. You can get all of us at Out of Lives Net over on Twitter as well. Or go to outoflives.net to look at other articles and listen to the shows that we put together. If you're watching us or listening to us on Twitch, hit follow, hit subscribe, whatever those buttons are, is follow. You can subscribe to us if you really want to. We do lots of other things on Twitch as well, like gameplay videos and stuff. Uh, Adel and I, we get together occasionally on a Wednesday. He has his first looks on a Tuesday normally. Radari will be streaming on a Friday when he's back to it as well. And we do Geek Out Weekly on a Monday, which is uh, another podcast-style show where Adel and I talk about a topic in depth for an hour. Uh, all of that is found on advice.net as well. You can go to our YouTube page. You can find us on your podcast service of choice. If you're feeling generous with the next five minutes you've got, rate us, review us on your podcast service of choice because that always helps spread the word and get more people involved. You can also come to our Discord to chat to us. Tell us about the beers you've drank or the games that you've played. We'll actually talk to you. That's a thing we can do. A thing we'd be happy to do. Um yep. If, though, you don't like a couple of us and you only want to talk to us, to <laughs> one of us specifically, you could do so. <laughs> Lucy, how do people get hold of you? Oh, I'm not the favourite here. <laughs> but if you were... Um, uh, Adam, <laughs> how do people talk to you? The Omniarch. Uh, and I'm at Nova underscore 47. I think that's everything. I think that's all of the things we do, all of the places we inhabit, all of the beers we drank, and all the games we have played for this week. So, I can finish by saying we have been tanked up. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. Sayonara. Ciao. (laughs) Very multicultural this week. Mm. Mmm www.outoflives.net